Hello my friends, Paul here in the Road JB Music Workshop and welcome to part three of the classical guitar mini refurbishment, restoration, call it what you like. Uh, first of all, apologies for the, the abrupt ending of part two. Um, as I was cleaning the guitar, the headstock landed on the remote control and switched the video off. <laughs> so apologies for that. Um, so I've basically just switched it straight back on again, so you haven't missed anything. So in the uh, previous video, I was just wiping the whole guitar over with a damp cloth, uh, which I've now done. So what I want to do now is give it a light polish. Um, so, so I've got two brand new clean cloths there. And uh, I'll start with the headstock. Now, all I'm using here is a, a, a simple uh, beeswax polish. Um, there's no sort of, you know, no any, no hidden extras in there. Practically odorless. So just uh, start with a little dab on the headstock. Oh dear, that's way too much. Okay. So. Now, with this beeswax, it's a good idea just to do a little bit at a time and then wipe it off. Because if you leave it on too long, like, like most wax polishes, it will be harder to get off. So, let me just do the other side of the headstock, or the back of the headstock. And I'll do the sides and the top. Okay, and then I'll just wipe that straight off now. Buff it off with a clean cloth. That's looking pretty good. I mean, I don't want it to look perfect, and it ain't going to look perfect, but I want it to look like it's been taken care of, you know? Okay, so the neck. I mean, this beeswax is it's good stuff. And uh, it's quite cheap, it's nothing special, um, but it does the job you need it to do. And it's, you know, beeswax is really good for wood, uh, treated or untreated, or finished. Okay, that's looking rather good. So now I'll do the back. So it really is just a, a, a light polish, you know, it's not. It's not being buffed or anything like that. Just a bit of a polish. Okay, bottom half. Oh, be careful about that. Don't want to damage the bridge. And it's a good idea with your off cloth to keep turning it so that you're using a clean bit of cloth. Otherwise you end up just, you know, smearing the polish all around. You don't really want that. Okay, that's looking fine. So, sides. Oh, incidentally, between the first and second video, um, the strings had arrived. Uh, I didn't have any in stock, so I had to order some. So I got some uh, medium tension and some hard tension. This guitar is definitely 100% having the medium, or normal, I should say, tension, not the hard tension. I think uh, it needs a rest from those steel strings, so it needs something fairly light, not too much tension. Okay, it's coming up rather nice. I mean, it's an old guitar, it's got, you know, scratches and dings and all sorts of marks all over it, so I'm not looking for perfection, I just want it to look nice and clean. I'm not trying to fully restore it. It's basically a refurbishment, really. It's not even a restoration but you know this guitar only came in for strings um, I'm just kind of going above and beyond as I always do I shouldn't really because it costs me money but I enjoy doing it so there's no harm 
and you know if you make a good job of a customer's guitar they're much more likely to come back to you if they need other things doing or, or to buy something it's just the way I've always been unfortunately <laughs> in any business you know customer satisfaction is key whether they're right or wrong <laughs> you know keep your customer happy keep your customer that's my motto okay that's looking pretty good to be honest as I said I'm not, not aiming for perfection I just want it to look nice and clean and cared for and right now it does Final buff. Just put that polish out of the way. Where's the lead? Yes. Right. Get all the final buff. As I say, keep the cloth turning. Try not to use the same piece of cloth for any length of time, otherwise you just, you know, spread the polish all around. You want to be taking it off, not spreading it around. Should we do that a bit where I was holding the neck? Nicely polished up, looks nice and shiny and clean. Back to yeah, looks rather nice. Okay, so uh, before I start to string it up, obviously I've got to um, oil this fretboard. Let me just turn that around a bit. Uh, now, what about the bridge? Yeah, I'll oil the bridge as well. So. Uh, my trusty boiled linseed oil, which I always use on fretboards and bridges. Now, this is going to transform this. <coughs> so I'll just show you what before of the fretboard. I mean, it looks clean now and uniform, but obviously still a bit dull and very, very dry. So, uh, boiled linseed oil, don't need a lot, just a little dab on the cloth. That there will be enough to do the whole fretboard. So first of all, I just kind of rub it all the way up and down, get it all over, and then start to rub it in. Wow. This, wood, this fretboard, fretboard wood now looks completely different. Completely different. It was well in need of a drink. <laughs> As I said, it hasn't been done for years quite possibly hasn't been done its entire life since new would be my guess most people to be fair especially non-professionals don't know anything about oiling fretboards but it is so important you know because not only does it look better but it plays and feels better and lasts a heck of a lot longer which is uh, one of the most important things. You don't want to be replacing fretboards on a guitar. <clears throat> okay, so now I wipe off the excess almost straight away. So you don't want to leave any excess oil on there because it, it will kind of go sticky uh, and, and attract all sorts of horrible dirt and fluff and dust and it will just feel completely nasty. It may need another coat of oil on this fretboard, I'm not sure, because as I said, it was incredibly dry. Okay, I think that will be good actually. <coughs> so, you saw the before, and this is after. The camera in this light doesn't really do it any justice, but it does look a lot better. That's a better light, better angle. There we go. So it's all, you know, 
I did that little repair inside on the brace. It's all nicely cleaned up and polished. Uh, so the last thing now is to string it up and tune it up. Uh, and as I said, um, I got two set, two different types of uh, classical guitar strings. I've got a few sets of each because, as I said, I was out of stock. And this is going with a normal tension. So just to compare the sizes of the strings or the gauges uh, going from um, high E to low E. So hard tension, normal tension, 285, 280. Two th uh, 327, 322, 410, 403, 30, 29, 36, 35, 44, 43. So the difference in them is very, very mi minor, but it does make quite a bit of difference to the overall tension. Okay, so uh, let's see. The easiest way to do this for me. Uh, right, so open the strings first, obviously. It's going to be one easy way. Now, and as I said, when this guitar came in, it, it had steel strings on it. And, uh, you know, looking inside at those braces, the really thin ones that run, you know, down here at the centre and, and both sides, they're about 4mm wide and about 3mm thick. And there's no bridge plate under there. So the fact that it was strung up with steel strings, with that minor bracing inside, it really is a massive surprise to me that this didn't just completely rip the top of this guitar off. And as I said, there is, there is still a little bit of uh, bulge behind the bridge, and that will come back a bit more once I've strung it up and got it all up to tension. But there it is. What can you do? Okay, so, uh, oh, I need the saddle as well. Um, I'm going to just clean out the slots of, the, of this saddle before I put it back in. They're a bit grimy. I'll use my old toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just uh, cleaning out the grime from the um, slots in the nut. I'm not going to, you know, recut them or anything like that. I think the, the height was about right. But I don't want to do any more extra work that's not necessary. Okay, that should be good. So, I said I really, I really do like this nut. It's so unusual, but so just makes sense. Uh, so I want that way round. Okay. Now. Stringing up a, um, a classical guitar is quite a bit different to an acoustic guitar. Um, it is quite tricky. What are we doing for time? Okay, we've got time. So, what I'm going to do is start with the uh, first string, which is the thinnest one, or the thinnest of the, the actual single nylon strings. Uh, so, that all the treble strings, the, the higher ones if you like, are all just nylon strings, but the, the bass side strings are nylon with a, I think it's a steel winding, I think, but I'm not sure of that. Does it say on there? Uh, silver plated wound. <laughs> okay, so string one, first of all. Where is it? Come on. There we go. Okay. So let me just let me just three, four, five, okay. Find me do for just zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you're still not really gonna see too well what I'm doing, but basically I feed the end of the string through the hole in the bridge. Okay, and then bring it back round over the top and I tie a double loop. You really can't see what I'm doing. And then I pull it taut. Okay, so let me just show you that. Focus. 
Okay, so the, the string goes through the hole here, then back over, and then it's a double loop, and then pull it taut so that the end of the string comes out there. Okay, so I'm going to get the first three strings uh, tied on at this end. So now I want the second string. <coughs> okay, so back over the top, double loop, then pull it taut. Okay, that's string three, where's number three? Where's number three? There it is. Okay. Where's it gone? There it is. Just check, yep, yeah, that's string three. Okay, so let's get that one through, back over. Out of the way, double loop, and pull it all. Okay, so that's that end. Now, for the headstock end, this is where it starts to get pretty time consuming, to be honest. Uh, let me just angle that camera down a bit more. Okay, so. The first string, just bring that one up, goes into the first tuner, the one nearest the nut. So it's kind of, at first, it's, it's sort of trial and error because uh, these nylon strings, they stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. So you don't want too much string wound around the actual tuner. So you've got to kind of experiment a little bit. Um, you don't want to put the string through and then uh, pull it taut uh, because you, you won't have enough winding on there. So you've got to bring it back a little bit so that you get a bit of winding on there. And you want the, it's kind of hard to show you, but the, the holes in these uh, tuning barrels are on this side. So these are on this side, these are on this side. So you put the string through the hole and when you wind, you want the winding to go from this edge towards the middle, okay? And that, that's quite important so they don't get tangled up and you don't get, you know, um, misreading of, of tension, as it were. Okay, so I haven't got it taut. I've got a little bit of loose string on there. So, uh, let me just start to wind that around now and see how we look for windings you know it's, it's going to pull on the, the knot the nut the knot <laughs> at the bridge end so it will you know take a while to get up to tension As I said, I don't want too many windings around this post, but I want enough for it to hold itself in place. So you can hear now it's starting to come up to tension. I've still got a long way to go, but, and it's dropped down again. Pulling the knot, the knot taut at the bridge end. So it's starting to come up to tension now, and I don't know if you can see uh, the windings on here. No, you really can't. It's not going to focus. There's about four or five windings around there now and there's still room for plenty more but I don't want too many more so that seemed to be quite good judgment there so how are we doing for time still got a bit of time okay so I'm going to put string two in now same process uh, so put it through the hole uh, don't pull the string taut leave a little bit of, oh, a little bit not that much <laughs> a little bit of slack on the string 
uh, to allow a few windings around the post. Okay. <clears throat> round and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. Let's put that in the slot. Okay, so we've got the first winding on. Nothing yet, no tension. So yeah, that seemed to be quite good judgment on my part about how much string to leave slack. First string has still got some tension. So yeah, I mean, you know, stringing these up as opposed to a, an acoustic guitar is much more time consuming and fiddly. It's kind of the same process, but bearing in mind that nylon strings stretch about 10 times more than, than steel strings, and they take a long time to settle down. So you can hear it, the, ten, the tension goes up and then it drops again. And it's dropped again. <laughs> and we've got about three windings on there at the moment. And it's dropped again. Not quite sure where that's. Yeah, it's still pulling the nut or the, the nut knot taut at the bridge end. Starting to hold, so string three, exactly the same process again. Now, because this string is a bit thicker, um, I could potentially leave a bit more slack because um, the thicker strings don't stretch quite as much as the thinner strings. But I'm still gonna, you know, not leave too much uh, slack on the string. It seems to be, I seems to have got, got the judgment fairly good, which is good. <laughs> and also the thicker strings come up to tension a bit, a bit quicker as well. Right, so that's the process, and it's quite a long process. You know, it, take, it takes ages to kind of get it to where you need it to be, but you can see what's going on. Just switch that light off. So I'm going to put the rest of the strings in and um, get them up to tension. Uh, and then the fourth and last video will be uh, kind of, you know, a demo of what the thing looks like. Not so much sounds like, because as most of you will know, I'm no guitar player, but you know, it's starting to, to get there now. Um, I will finish this today, thankfully, and uh, hopefully get it back to the customer by the end of the week. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna be happy with it. Okay, so I'd like to thank you all for watching. And uh, as I said, there's one more episode in this, um, you know, where once I've got all the strings on and up to tension, and we'll see what it looks and sounds like. Okay, so in the meantime, please look after yourselves, look after each other. We will see you soon. Peace out.